At a party like this, a Percy Beth High School alternate universe, Percy Jackson fan fiction story, part one. House parties were everything everyone in movies told you about, and possibly more. But if more meant better, then that was sorely mistaken. Cliche drunk teenagers dancing closer together than their mommies and daddies would like. There was a blunt being passed around, people clamoring for a hit. The music was loud, trap music or electric dance. It was hot and cramped. Sweaty people were moving around way too immersed in each other or in a drink to realize that perhaps they had hit someone. Percy Jackson was not like one of those people. He had no clue how Jason, Nico, Grover, and Leo managed to get him to go out and socialize, but they had. He scrunched his nose up and glared at a couple who had run into his side. God, this party sucked. The lights were bright red, and considering it was 11.20 p.m., the black darkness outside oozed in. Percy wandered around the room aimlessly, perhaps looking for an emo-looking kid, or a freckled ginger drunk off his life, no doubt, crying about his girlfriend, or an energetic Latino boy with charms enough to entice a senior, or at the very least, the hero blonde boy who was no doubt driving people too drunk to stay at home. No luck finding them. Percy sighed and went off to find some wall to brood against. That's when he spotted her. This girl? She did not belong. This party was held by one of the most punk people in school. The two bright red lights and hardcore music was no such scenery for a girl like her. People were in heaps at this party, dressed in black leather, spiked chokers, and combat boots that had yet to be broken in. Their hair was dyed the bright shades of pitch black with streaks of neon purple, pink, and green. Every rocker, every grunge, every punk, every emo, and every goth kid in school and out of district were here letting loose. But this girl was not in any of those categories, no. She was leaning against the wall in a rather stable way considering the black heels on her feet. Other than her footwear, there was not a speck of darkness on her. Her attire was unheard of in this crowd. A light blue tank top paired with high-waisted white jean shorts. She looked more, hmm, pretty in pink than the outsiders. Not to mention that she had curly blonde hair a Disney princess would coo over in a figure blessed by every god humans had ever worshipped. Hey. Percy said, coming up closer when he gained the confidence to do so. The blonde girl was tapping away at her phone like the most popular girl in school, but took a break to look up at him. Hi, she said plainly before resuming to a clearly more interesting conversation on the screen. What are you doing? he asked, trying to sound as smooth as possible. See, this girl was... Insanely pretty. Clearly she had makeup on. No one was born with those black wings on their eyes and shiny cheekbones. But it was minimal. She hadn't looked long enough for Percy to catch her eyes, but they seemed to be a very light yet dark blue. Her lips were full and painted a bright red, not the blood red that some of the other girls at the party were sporting. She shut off her phone with a loud click. Well, it appears to be that I'm talking to you, she said with a small, sly smile. Percy barked a laugh. He was, she was making his mood a thousand times better. I guess so. But you didn't seem to be mingling with anyone else, he pointed out. The girl cradled her chin between her thumb and pointer finger. And what if it just so happens that I intended on mixing in with the crowd? she said. Percy rubbed the back of his neck slowly. Then I say sorry for stomping on your plans, he said honestly. The blonde cracked something between a smile and a right pulled smirk. Why are you talking to me? I don't know. The girl hummed. Terrific answer, 
She rolled her eyes, her voice dripping with sarcasm. But if it's the truth, I guess I could accept it, she hummed after a second. Percy nodded his head quickly to tell her that it was. She seemed skeptical, but didn't question him further. I have a question, he blurted out. She raised a brow for him to answer it, to ask it. Why are you at this party? It doesn't quite seem like you're seen. No offense, I, I try not to judge too quickly, Percy said, adding the last part when she crossed her arms tightly. No need. I'm more than aware of my appearance, she said, clearly confident in herself. Her lips were pursed to a side. After all, I am the only one wearing pastel, she said with a lowly amused voice, making Percy chuckle. If you were to judge quick, what would you think of me? She asked. Percy shook his head, his head frantically like a cartoon character. W what He stammered. She smiled and bit back a laugh. Judge me, she said bluntly. Her stare was blank and intense. God, her, her eyes, they were gray. Not just bluish gray, dark storm clouds gray. The type you saw at 8.30 p.m. when you were just about to go to sleep, but you heard thunder and ripped open one of the windows to stare at the incoming rain. Oh my god, when did storm clouds become so pretty and breathtaking? He ripped his eyes away from her face to not seem like a staring creep for just a second before re reconfigurating on, a wall above, on the wall above her head. After a breath, Percy stuttered out an okay and looked at her thoughtfully again. He couldn't very well say, You are the prettiest girl I've ever met, without sounding crazy. Well, you look like you're one of the popular girls at school who everyone adores and has like 3.6k followers on Instagram, Percy decided on. The girl raised a brow up high. I was expecting that, she said flatly. Percy smiled sheepishly. You didn't answer why you were here, Percy said, pointing a finger. The blonde girl smiled in an impressed way. I came to lean on this wall, she said in a serious voice, and Percy began to chuckle, before stopping and trying his darnest to figure out if she was joking or serious. Dang, her blank, deaf stare was terrifying. And hot, but terrifying. She then cracked a small smile and shook her head. I'm kidding, calm yourself. I came here with some friends. I'm sure you did too. Or did you plan on finding a random girl and strike up conversation with her? She asked, raising her brow in a playful and accusive way. Nah, I had a group that convinced me. What friends dragged you here? Percy asked, shoving his hands in his pockets over and over. She smirked at him. And when did I say I came here against my will? She asked innocently, a laugh in her tone. Percy gaped at her. You didn't get forced to come? Man, even I was. Percy leaned back as far as he could without falling, though it did mean hitting a person who fiercely glared at him. Ah, uh, well, as appearances can be deceiving, so can people themselves. I'm more than just a popular girl, despite what you and the rest of the party are thinking, I'm sure. The girl looked like she was melting into the background, the wall, and the outside of the party. Clearly, if she was popular, she was not the life of the party. She was probably just the best friend if they were in the movie. Yeah, she'd be the best friend that was always there but was nothing more than just necessary background. Though, with just one look at her, you would know that she could not just be background. So what friends did you come with? Well, just a small group of girlfriends. Haven't seen them, though. They're probably off who knows where doing God knows what. You sound like you don't have much faith in them. I don't have much faith in humanity. That's interesting, Percy said stiffly. Not sure if he should agree, because humanity was tearing the world apart, or 
defend the race that had created and experienced so many wonderful things and loved others so dearly. What were you doing leaning against the wall? He asked, switching the conversation. She clearly noticed, because a quiet, swallowed laugh came from her, making Percy's ears cry to hear a full silver bell-like one come from her. My, my, my. So many questions. You do know curiosity killed the cat, she said, the smirk flashed smile back on her beautiful features. Percy gave her a full smirk, no pulled back stuff like she was giving. But satisfaction brought it back, he threw the rest of the popular saying back at her. She tilted her head to the side in interest. How educated, she breathed. Percy felt his cheeks go warm. If it weren't for the already red room, she would have seen the pink stain that had blossomed on his face. Uh, yep, that's me, he said awkwardly. She smiled a tight line and pulled to the right, and Percy smiled awkwardly back at her, not sure what to say. He raised his arm and started combing through his hair. Well, well, I'd say I kept you long enough. I'm sure you'd like to get back to your friends, the girl said, pushing off the wall. Uh, no, wait, no, it's fine, it's, it's fine, I couldn't find them anyways, and you're more interesting to talk to than them, Percy winced. His voice kind of came out as a desperate cry and just seemed, and too quickly to seem chill. Even the girl noticed. She, and raised up one perfect eyebrow up at him to ask if, okay... Leo's probably, like, drunk out of his mind dancing with some random chicks that he caught, Percy muttered under his breath. The girl's mouth twitched up as if she was about to truly smile, but alas, it never came. Aren't you just in such desperate need of entertainment, she said sarcastically. Percy barked a laugh. You're a cynical one, aren't you, he said. She gasped dramatically and put a hand to her heart. I resent that. I like to think the best of people, she mock defended herself, making Percy chuckle. Really? he questioned, making her lowly laugh. You clearly don't give your friends the benefit of the doubt before thinking they're off doing the worse, he pointed out. But she pulled out a questioning face. When did I say they were doing the worse? I said they're who knows where doing God knows what. But does that truly equate to disastrously dancing on a table? I don't think so, she said with a sly, triumphant smile. Percy gave in. But seriously, you seem so cynical, Percy said going back to the original question. He noticed she really liked bouncing around, leading the conversation around to whatever topic she pleased without answering the original question. Why is that, she asked, seeming genuinely interested in the answer. You're so witty and sarcastic just you give off cynical vibes he tried to explain but failed miserably the blonde nodded her head slowly i guess my humor is too misleading she sighed i like to think that i'm only just the slightest bit she hummed looking to the left of percy are you she asked what was perhaps the first genuine question to him that wasn't laced with hostility, sarcasm, or her own brand of wit. Percy almost lost his breath looking at her, her red hot lips slightly her red hot, slightly parted mouth, intrigued eyes cocooned by thick black lashes. Nah, not at all, he said coolly once he found his voice again. He plastered on the signature troublemaker smile. Some people see the glass half full. Some people see it half empty, but I see it as something I can pour over a substitute teacher's head when they give us a worksheet. He finished with a cackle, and she had an amused expression on her face, albeit she was not laughing along. She clicked her tongue a couple of times when he was, while he was still laughing at his own little joke. She didn't push him to shut up or tell, told him that it was a dumb joke, but she did imply it. How old are you? She asked. Clearly this was a precursor to something else. Seventeen. Why do you ask? He responded. She threw him a surprised look, but quickly removed it, putting on a mask of call and emotionlessness. Could have fooled me, she said with a slight smile. 
18 years of age or seven, 17 years of age or 17 months? I'm sure either applies, she continued. Percy tilted his head and grinned fully at her. Really? I can walk into a bar and no one would bat an eye. He scrutinized her. She hummed and nodded at the newfound information. Um, I'm guessing it's happened before, she said. Percy gasped dramatically. How do you know? He said in a grandiose voice. The blonde shook her head with silent laughter. And Percy found himself disappointed that he didn't hear or see it on her face as it was covered by the golden tresses that looked soft and not free. His heart urged him to run his digits through it, but his brain told him that that was a creeper move. It, it really was. What do you take me as, a fool? She said with a thick amuse amusement back in her voice. Percy shrugged. Her eyes narrowed and the once bright face became dark, and she leaned towards him, not, taking, not moving a step forwards or even straightening up. But yet she seemed to tower over him. Consider and considering the fact that she went up to his shoulder, in reality, was saying something. I will have you know. It is rather dangerous to underestimate me. I suggest you smarten yourself up, the girl snapped at him, her voice seasoned with ice and hostility. Percy almost gulped and nodded quickly. Noted, he croaked out. She leaned back and smiled sickly sweetly. Percy felt the awkward air and decided that he didn't like it. By the way, what is your name? He asked. The girl smiled, her teeth barely showing. She crossed her arms and pulled on a smirk. And why do you need to know that information? She asked slickly. You are aware that we're not going to stay in contact. It's not necessary for you to know. She stepped towards him, heels clicking against the ground with every step. Percy lost his breath and his voice just and just stared at the smirking girl in front of him. She gave him a mock gasp. I can be that one girl you met at a party in high school and talked to for 20 minutes. She smiled fondly as if she could see the title in the air. Your future kids are going to love this story, the blonde said in a sing-song voice. With that, she patted his cheek softly and turned on her heels, whipping him in the face with her hair. Percy's eyes shut in order to avoid being sliced, though he doubted the sharpness of, of the soft locks that smelled like coconut. When he opened his eyes, she had already disappeared into the crowd. Loudly cursing and disrupting the people around him, Percy groaned and turned into the crowd to find the girl again. Couldn't be that hard. She was wearing a blue tank top and white jean shorts and a crowd of black leather.